I'm going to guess just early impressions, the discrepancies from Stillwater and Chapel Hill so far? Um, uh, I mean, you know, big difference, big difference. But both, both I think, the, you know, living-wise, quality of life, which I value very high, probably higher than I should as a coach. Um, it's I love college towns. I love living in small towns. So um, love being back, love being here. It's obviously a bit of a unique thing going from, from a head coach to assistant coach. Just kind of from your perspective, how did this kind of get rolling to, to end you up? Um, right you know, a call from coach, you know, and, and uh, that's where it was. You know, it was uh, I was loving life doing, doing my thing out there and um, really enjoyed my time and was very grateful and thankful for the opportunity I had out there. Um, you know, we were sort of just getting rolling in my mind. It takes, it takes a lot of years to, to get where you want to be. And, it's probably a never-ending process of where you want to be, um, but but yeah, I loved it. my family loved it out there. So, um, but really just a call from coach and explain what he's doing, what his mindset was, and, and sort of had me from there. When you were weighing those options on that phone call, what was what was kind of the kind of things we needed to step all back and forth? Um, really, just it was uh, you know between him and I of of what my role would be, you know um, what he envisioned me as, how I could add to the program, how I could uh, help help get us where we want to be right and that's that's contending to win national titles every year uh, on an individual stage and on a team stage and um, that was really the extent of everything we talked about in the most part it was just really how can I help and what do you envision me doing to help uh, get there right and then um, we'll work through everything else. It Dayton talked about earlier in the year how you grew up watching it was so surreal having mm -hmm. the former you know standout OSU wrestler coming back did you notice that immediately, like the, the, the kids embracing you based on your history? Yeah, sort of the age of these kids, right? Like they, they were in Gallagher as a young kid watching me, you know, in, in the early days. So um, just sort of that right age, right right place uh, thing. And, and of course, known Dayton and Dayton forever, you know, um, when I was here before. And, um, you know, so a lot of the Oklahoma kids I've known for, for quite a while, while because of that, you know, them growing up Cowboys and everything. So uh, it's been surreal for sure. What's changed and what stayed the same about Coach Smith, about the program, about, about everything? Um, you know, I mean, Coach Smith's drive's always there, right? What he, what he wants to do, how he want to do it, right? Um, not much of that's changed, right? He wants to win. He wants to do it the right way. Uh, surround himself with great people, uh, great kids, and, and um, you know, really he's one of the best mentors you can have uh, top to bottom um, and teaching you th through the, the right way and the hard way how to do things. Um, what's changed is just the, the I, th I would say the biggest change is college athletics, yeah. right? And, that, and that's across the board and, and what we're dealing with now, right? When we was, when, when I was here, it was a lot, I would say simpler, um, just with the sense of no NIL, no, none of this, the social media wasn't there, you know, sort of that whole piece is gone, right? So it was, it was more about just the student athlete and, and competing and winning. Um, there's a lot more to it now. And when you're dealing with, with kids and, and, and young men, um, you know, so I'd say just the complexity of college athletics has made any, any coaching job a little more challenging. When you walk into the locker room, do you let the guys know that I didn't have it like that whenever, whenever I was oh, there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I thought I had it awesome upstairs in the old locker room. I thought that was the nicest thing that I had seen. Um, you know, in the room was the room, and it was, it was unbelievable. And, um, you know, you just now it's, it's – and, that, again, that goes back to athletics a couple years ago with, you know, um, just expanding and pushing everything, all the – the money into the new facilities and uh, across all sports, you know, and uh, so it's been neat to see that, um, you know, because it, cause it is warranted, right? It's, it's, it's earned, not deserved, right? And these, these kids work their tails off and uh, they do a lot of good. So it's, it's good to see that they can get some of that reward. What's been some of your early takeaways from the season so far? Um, we, we got some dudes, you know, is, is probably the biggest thing, right? We, we first off the leadership and the, and the guidance that these kids have, uh, the, the, the core group of leaders, right? They're, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, these guys are, are here to win and here to win the right way. Um, so they're they're imparting that on these young kids, and, and I, I really do believe we're in a great spot pushing forward through not just this year but in the future. And, um, you know, it comes from the top down, right? And when you have great leaders on the team, great culture, right? It, it sort of plays over into that. Um, and it's not us sitting here talking about how great this is, right? It's them showing it, showing you guys how great it is, um, and that's what they're willing to do. You know, they they want to do it the right way and, and and be just a great human at the end of the day. What did you guys learn about yourself at the Flipkeen Invitational? Um, you know, a lot of good, a lot of good. Um, you know, a few little minor tweaks and bruises, but I think going through caliber of that tournament, it's it's near impossible to come out of there out of there unscathed. Um, you know, but but I, I do believe that that we figured some things out uh, internally, individually, uh, with what our guys needed to do and, and where they needed to be and, and what they need to continue to work on. Um, right. So I, I I'm really excited about 
the progress that we've made in a short period of time. Um, I, I believe the timing of the tournament was great. Now we can get back another tough week this week with a couple dual meets and then uh, finish up with Wyoming before Christmas and then really get into the meat of the schedule next year. But it really gives us time to make those adjustments and, and you know, fully heal up. And, you know, it might be this weekend that we're fully ready to go. You mentioned how the timing was ideal for uh -huh. you guys. Um, just given the, you know, the number of young wrestlers and new, yep. new wrestlers, and how advantageous can that early experience with the caliber of the Oh, absolutely. Like that Could have been, been bad. Yeah. Could have been bad, right? But but I think that they they learned a lot. They realized, you know, the matches that we we did lose that, that we were we were right there, and it's a, it is a, some some uh, execution of skill and figuring some things out um, on, on the mat. Um, it wasn't for lack of effort. It wasn't for any of that stuff, which is it was way harder to fix because we are. We are in the mix with some some of those young kids with some top ten guys, and, and that was great to see. Um, you know, and, and again, it's it's always a work in progress. But these guys, you know, it could have been bad, but I, I believe that we we knew where we were with the team and with those young guys, right? And, and throwing them to that was was it's what they needed. I think everybody expected Isaac to be pretty good, but have you? Yeah, he's all right. Have, have you? Did, did you expect what he's done so far this season? Did you expect that out of him as early as? Once I got to know him, okay. absolutely. Once I saw the way he worked. Right, um, the, the guy's a, he's a professional, right? And he comes in every day, he's got a great attitude. He, 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 uh, he's a leader at, at only being here a short period of time. And, um, you know, it's just great to see. He wants to work his tail off and, and do what's right. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's a guy that, that's not afraid to, to put himself in, in practice with a guy that's gonna push him. A uh, guy put him in some positions that, that are uncomfortable for him. Um, and you have to be willing to, to take yourself there, and he is each and every day that I've been here. That's what that's what he shows the most, and and it's just awesome for him to see that payoff a little bit. Of course, we've got a long season left, you know, two and a half, three months left, but but that payoff is, is already starting to happen to show, hey, I am, I am, I can be talked about this top echelon of guys. It's it's not, hey, he may all, but no, he's at that top range of competing for a national title, and. and uh, the more he believes in himself and, and the people around him as he already is, is it's just going to continue to grow. And he mentioned young guys earlier. Jordan Williams mm -hmm. didn't start the year um, yep. in the dual meet, but what, what do you think you found out about him throughout these these tournaments? And... Uh, you know, he's wrestling top 10 kid out there, and, you know, so I think we didn't finish six or seven shots, right, and lose by takedown. So he's, so he's right there, right? He's, he's sort of got to clean up some stuff, and, and really um, it's – He's going to be able to get there because of his work ethic, right? He uh, he's an unbelievable worker in the room and understands that and sees that and uh, sort of just holds some stuff in, right? He, he sort of wrestles wild, uh, which is awesome, right? But we've got to hone it in and make it our style a little bit. And he's uh, he's been doing a really good job of that this last week, and um, you know, so it's going to be awesome to see his growth through this year. And he needs this year uh, more than anything. I want to go back to that phone call from Coach yeah. Smith for a second? How quick of a process after that call did it take for you to you know get your name signed on some dotted lines? Um, it, it wasn't it wasn't extremely quick, you know. Talking to the wife and you know uh, my wife's from Oklahoma City, and, and but my kids have been pretty much raised in, in Chapel Hill, right? So uh, we had, we had had some set some roots down there and, and had some great friends and uh, and, and families there and. Um, that was a huge part to us is, is just, you know, what, what's best for us and our family, right? Not me. I'm, not, I'm, I'm done competing. I'm done doing my thing. Uh, it's not about me. Um, I know what I want to do, but, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's about, you know, there's more than me. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure my kids were, were involved in it. I wanted to make sure uh, my wife was involved in, in the decision and the talking. And uh, so we worked through some of that stuff and, you know, sort of we were, we were – Ironically enough, on family vacation, so it was just us five uh, sitting there in a car, uh, rental car, driving around L.A. because we were seeing going to some base. My kids love baseball games, so going to baseball games and, as you know, L.A. traffic two or three hours, uh, and that's when a lot of that happened. Um, turn the music off and let's have a discussion. Uh, kids had no no clue what the heck was going on at the at the moment, but you know, having a 12 year old, and a nine year old, and a five year old, you know, the older ones sort of sort of grasp and, and had some input. And, what they miss, and we weighed our pros and cons right there. What were some of those pros and cons? Um, again, it goes back to quality of life. If I can give every uh, my kids um, everything that the oppor every opportunity that I had as a kid, um, they're they're highly mo motivated in certain sports. And uh, my daughter wants to play soccer and lacrosse and do all this stuff, so I wanted to make sure I didn't take that away from her. Um, the boys are a little bit easier. My my sons want to play football, baseball, and wrestling, right? So that's a little easier to find uh, and navigate. Um, so, the, so the biggest one was my daughter, just making sure she could be taken care of uh, soccer-wise. And, uh, and again, I don't know if she'll be great, but, but just having the opportunity to do what she wanted to do uh, and strive like I did to, to the next level, right? So 
um, that was the biggest thing for me is just making sure that we had the opportunity for them. Your daughter is the oldest one? Yes. Yeah. Was there kind of a deciding factor for you to where you felt good enough to leave a program that you kind of built up and to come back over here? Um, I don't know if it was one thing, but it, but it was awful hard, right? Making that call to, you know, my, my, my bosses there, Bubba and, and Vince, um, had been unbelievable for the last nine years, right? It, it was, uh, they, were, they were awesome leaders. Uh, consider them friends now and, and uh, you know so that so that was probably the hardest thing is to call them and I talked about with, with Vince my associate AD for a while just back and forth of thought process and he helped me through that a little bit and uh, he's an Oklahoma guy originally so he understood and he knows what what cowboy wrestling is and um, you know pouring whatever I had into, into this place you know from 2004 to 14 when I was here uh, meant a lot to me right and, and, and this place is it, it's you know, it's a place that I, I've always envisioned and wanted to be. If it was ever a possibility, if it wasn't, I was I was great. I was doing good. I was fine where I was. Um, but but I, you know, if it ever came up, I knew it'd be a hard a hard thing to pass up. Do you view yourself as a potential successor one day to the program? Nah, that's 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 above my head, right? That's uh, I don't make those decisions, and um, I'm just here to, to help Cowboy Wrestling and OSU Wrestling and see where we can go. Um, you know. Again, if it's an opportunity, it's an opportunity, right? Um, I'm in a great place and uh, love what I'm doing and you know, love where I live and, and it's, uh, that's, that's what I view it as. Coleman, what are some of your fondest memories just with the door coming up? Oh man, um, uh, of course it was, it, was, it was pretty highly contested, you know, my, my couple, my four years here competing. Um, and probably the one that sticks out the most was my true freshman year, came out of red shirt in January, so it was that second bedlam here at home. and. Um, Never really wrestled in small town Pennsylvania, so I hadn't wrestled in front of a crowd like that, you know, 10,000 plus. Um, really just that, just coming out and, and realizing in that moment what these people thought of Bedlam and Cowboy Wrestling, OSU Wrestling, and, and the support that we had. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that I had. That, that true freshman year is just my eyes were big. I, I wrestled the number one kid in the country and, and had that opportunity to do it, uh, you know, a couple times a year. And, um, just the just the the care, right? It, without without having that passion uh, in life, right? Like, what is there, right? If you don't have relationships, don't have passion, like, what is there, right? And that's what you see in this match, right? It's passion. Uh, they truly care about this and care about us and uh, doing everything we can to come out on top. And you know, we're in a good place. With us, not the meet end up getting. Oh, we won. We won. I did. What about you? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> With, with as new as a lot of the members of this team are, do you try and talk to them about what to expect on the emotional spectrum, on the, the, the crowd level that they'll walk into on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, right? I, I think that, that most of these kids, you know, growing up nowadays with the way the landscape is, like they've wrestled in front of some big crowds. Um, I don't think they'll they'll find any as hostile as here or Iowa, right? And, um, you know, so it, it will be a little bit of a surprise, but, we'll, you know, they're, they'll be ready. They'll be ready, right? And I think that, again, uh, their care and their passion for this place will, will spill over into in, down there in Norman, right? And, and, and that's all we ask. Having been around John the day to day, for as long as you were, uh -huh. and then being gone for a while, how different is he now? Is he, has he changed, mellowed, not mellowed? Um, he's been pretty mellow since I've been back, right? And, um, you know, and, I, and, and again, um, you know, John is a, as a coach, John is a mentor, John is a friend. There's, there's a couple different, you know, relationships that you have with him. Uh, when you when you come from an athlete to training for the Olympics and then on staff, right? And um, you know, I think that the biggest thing is just me being able to have an open conversation with what I see, what I think, what I've seen the last nine years, and uh, some stuff we did. And, and he's very open to to listening and implementing and, and doing. And um, that's been the biggest and most for me the best thing, just being able to have those conversations and say, hey, this is what I saw that worked for us, and um, him having that open mindset to, hey, we might we might do that. We we could change a little bit here. And, um, you know, and, and coaches to me has just been one of that guy. That, no matter where I was, he was always a phone call away, and he'd answer, and he'd help me through the situation. So we've uh, we've had that relationship even though I was gone for for nine years. Do you have uh, uh, any kind of relationship with Coach Kish? Know much about him at all? Um, no, not really. You know, just just him being up in North Dakota State, and um, never really crossed paths anywhere. Um, you know, just me being out on the East Coast for so long, and and uh, know he wrestled. I mean, probably wrestled against each other when he's in Minnesota. Uh, probably on some similar teams, overlapped a little bit. Uh, but no, not really.